In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about rotoscoping, all the tricks, secrets, and how to get the best possible rotoscope. If you're not already familiar with what rotoscoping is, it's basically removing your subject from the background. Before we get into the video, be sure to be subscribed to the channel because like 50% of you guys are not subscribed and I upload videos like this all the time. Also, once you learn how to rotoscope, if you want some effects or you just want to save time and you already know how to rotoscope, I have a bunch of editing packs and presets that work perfectly with rotoscoped out clips like the Liquid Explosion, the Liquid Explosion V2, and one of my favorites, the Motion Warp presets. All you have to do is rotoscope out your subject Subject, duplicate the background layer and then drag on a preset. If you're interested in supporting the channel, leveling up your videos and getting some high quality presets, I'll have them linked down below. But let's get into the video. So in After Effects, I tried to choose two separate clips that were hard to rotoscope by themselves. For example, this first one is just too dark and you can see around Drake's head, the background and his head kind of like start to merge together. Like there isn't much contrast. So this is going to be a harder clip to rotoscope. And then on the second clip, this is actually pretty easy to rotoscope, except for his beard down here. Most people struggle with hair in rotoscopes. So I'm going to show you how to get a really clean rotoscope and keep all the detail in his beard. So starting on this first clip of Drake, it's very hard to tell where his head kind of ends and where the background starts. So a secret tip that I've kind of learned and developed and used over the years is if you drag on Lumetri Color and play with the Curves Editor, that way you can brighten up some of the highlights and the shadows. It'll make your image look really bad for a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's just for the roto and then we can remove it later. And this isn't something you have to do with every single rotoscope. It's just if you're having a hard time separating your background from the subject. For example, for us, Drake's hair and the background were both black and you couldn't really tell where it starts or ends. But if you have a very clear distinction between your subject and the background, kind of like here, honestly, you can see like there's light here and it's very clear where my hoodie ends and where the background starts, then you don't have to do this step. So to actually start rotoscoping, this is the rotoscope tool up here. Make sure to select on that. And then on your composition clip, if you double click that, it will open up a layer of just that video clip. Now you can start painting out your subject just by clicking and dragging. If you want to change the size of the roto brush, you can hold control or command on Mac and just click and drag. If you click up, it's going to make it bigger. If you click and drag down, it's going to make it smaller. If you go out of bounds, you can hold alt on your keyboard to erase certain areas. I like to start off by getting a rough outline of your subject and then using the scroll wheel to zoom in and then H on your keyboard to kind of move around the scene and just making sure you get a really good rotoscope on that first frame. That way the computer knows what to interpret for the next frame and the following frames after. And then depending on your footage, if you think After Effects can do a good job distinguishing your subject from the background, you can go ahead and just press play. But for us, I knew this scene was going to be a tricky one. So I actually just went one frame at a time, just kind of tweaking it and making sure nothing broke in the rotoscope. As you can see here, there's this red light in the background that it thinks is Drake's head. And you want to catch stuff like that earlier on. That way it doesn't completely mess up the rotoscope. And then finally, once you get to that last frame, I see people struggle with this all the time on that last frame. Sometimes it just doesn't have your subject outlined and it has a pink border around the whole entire video clip. If you go to this mini timeline here and drag out the right hand side on this green bar, it's going to apply that same rotoscope data to that last frame. After that, you can decide if you want to remove the background or your subject. If you want to remove your subject, you can click invert foreground slash background. And this is really important. Once you have a good rotoscope, make sure to click freeze before you go ahead and close out of it. That way it's going to lock in the rotoscope and it's not going to change over time. After that, to get back to your project, just make sure to close the layer with the rotoscope. And now you can see we have a rotoscoped out subject. If you don't see a checkered background, you can go down here and toggle the transparency. It's either going to be black or checkered. To see if you have a good rotoscope, I'd recommend going to the checkered. It's just easier to see most of the time. And now we can remove that Lumetri color. It's no longer needed. It was just to help us get a better rotoscope. And to get the best rotoscope on your footage, it's really good to play with the feather and then also the shift edge. Most of the time I find myself bringing up the feather a little bit and then actually bringing the shift edge to the negative. I always like to err on the side of removing too much. And then you can go ahead and duplicate that layer with the rotoscope and delete the rotoscope effect from your background layer. That way the top layer is just the subject by itself and the bottom layer is a completely normal video clip. And if you want a really simple way to add VFX behind your rotoscoped out layer, I have a bunch of editing packs and presets that will help you do that. For example, the Liquid Explosion V1, V2, and then also the Motion more pack are absolutely amazing and designed for rotoscope out effects like this. Just go ahead and duplicate that background layer one more time and then drag on any of the liquid explosion presets. The liquid explosion presets give you this really trippy look and they're fully customizable. You can change the keyframes or the values of the colors, whatever you really want. There's a great starting point for some VFX. And if you want something a little bit less flashy, more clean and professional, I love the motion warp presets. You just drag them onto the background layer again, just like how we did before. You can change the length of the keyframes and it gives you these really clean like background whips and swipes and just looks really clean and professional on your foot. Footage. Now moving on to the second clip, this is going to be really easy to rotoscope except for Drake's beard here. You can see how there's kind of like some transparency behind the background. So start off by just rotoscoping out your subject and getting a good outline. After that, we need to make sure we have a really clean rotoscope on Drake's beard here. So if you go up to where the rotoscope brush tool is, if you click and hold, there's also a brush called the refine edge tool. That's the tool we're going to be using to make sure his beard is perfectly masked. So select on that. I'd recommend bringing your brush down a decent amount by holding control and 
dragging down and then just going around where his beard is and you can see how it like turns it black and white and it shows the detail between the background and his beard make sure you get a good selection of the hair in the background and now like i said this one's going to be a really simple roto so you can actually just press play you'll learn over time when you have to go frame by frame or when you can press play but this example the background is very distinct from drake so we don't have to go frame by frame and select everything but we did have to go ahead and use the refine edge tool to make sure that we get his beard properly after that go ahead and click freeze and now you can see how good the refine edge tool actually did here you can see we didn't lose any detail in his beard but we also don't have like a harsh weird edge around his beard. Just to show you how good of a job it did, I'm gonna add a red salad. I'm actually using Workflow. It's coming out tomorrow, by the way. If you alt click on a salad, you can choose the color and you can really see how good of a job the Refine Edge tool does. There's the transparencies, but there's also not the lack of detail. That's pretty much everything you need to know about rotoscoping to get the best possible results. Like I said, if you're trying to level up your videos with those rotoscope out effects, I'll have the Liquid Explosion V1, V2, and the Motion Warp presets linked in the description. Those presets are actually designed for clips that are rotoscoped out exactly like this. So if you wanna level up your video, support the channel, and also get some really high quality presets. I'll have them all linked down in the description. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm uploading videos here daily. Drop a like on the video and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.